Today on the Believer's Voice of Victory, Gloria Copeland and Pastor George Pearsons explain what it means to be joint heirs with Jesus. Discover everything that's included in your inheritance when you were born into the kingdom of God. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Believer's Voice of Victory. Pastor George is back with us, and he's got his gun loaded, looks like. <laughs> He's oh got it all loaded. ready to go. My Hallelujah. gospel gun loaded. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Go ahead. <laughs> well, we're talking about being heirs of God. I and like it. Partaking of the fullness of our inheritance. And this is, th this is a tremendous topic. It's it so is. revealing to us of what belongs to us in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've been, we have been amassing some tremendous gloriasms during the last couple of days. <laughs> I happen to have several of them here uh -huh. before me. Now this one, this one that you said, uh, the benefits of the will belong to the family and I'm in the family. That's right. So I like that. That's very good. We'll like use that, that one. And then this one, lift up your eyes and expand your horizons. So we're lifting up our eyes, expanding yes. our view of the inheritance that belongs to Amen. us. And uh, this one here, we've been kind of working on this one. This is, uh, this is one that pastors can use where church is concerned. And we ne I'd never seen it quite like this before, but this is, this is a gloriousm here. <laughs> you don't want to miss the reading of the will. That's right. Come to church this Sunday. Isn't that good? I like that <laughs> I really myself. Like that one. That was from You the don't Lord. want to miss the reading of the will. Because that's what we do basically is yeah. when we come into church, that's the pastor will get up, open the scriptures and just begin to lay before the people what belongs to them in Christ. That's what he should be doing. That's what he should be doing. <laughs> um, so that's, that's what we're talking about, Gloria, is, mm. is what belongs to us in this inheritance and focusing on the fact that we are heirs of God joint heirs with Jesus. And that's what we're talking about today is Think being... Think about going to church. Mm. You can't be a, a receiver without faith. You can't have faith right. without hearing the Word of God or right. reading it or right. seeing it, right. putting your eyes and your ears. Yeah. So it's all together. It really is. It really is. And it's needed. It's so needed. I mean, that it, it really is challenging to me because that's my job description. I'm, yeah. I'm the reader of the will. That's right. That's to the right. congregation. And the will, the will points out, a, a natural will will point out what belongs to various individuals. Mm -hmm. I bequeath this to this person and I bequeath this to that person and I leave this to this person. Yesterday on the broadcast, we were talking about John D. Rockefeller and how he really began giving his son uh, be, before Rockefeller passed away, he'd given him in excess of half a billion dollars in, in Standard Oil stock, in uh, cash, in the companies that he had. So <clears throat> the reading of the will, this is the will of God. That's right. This is it right here. And his will lays out for us what belongs to us. And this is not in your notes, but I just thought about this. You said something a moment ago that triggered this. And when we're talking about the reading of the will and what belongs to us, I immediately thought about the 103rd Psalm. And the 103rd Psalm says, Bless the Lord, O my mm -hmm. soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget, forget not, not all, all his benefits. benefits. If you forget his benefits, you can't receive his benefits. That's true. Because there's no faith there. There's no faith there to, to, to take it. And so what the benefits are really is the will. Mm -hmm. This, is, this mm -hmm. is the will of God. This is what belongs to you. This is yours. That's and as right. we talked about yesterday, we become heirs of God by right of birth. That's right. Becoming we're children. Born into the we're kingdom. born into the kingdom of God. And so the kingdom belongs to us. That's Fear not, little flock. We're born again into the kingdom. Born again into the God. kingdom of God. And these things belong to us. Well, here in the 103rd Psalm, he's talking about forget not all his benefits or forget not all of the inheritance mm -hmm. of what belongs to you. And listen to this. He starts listing it. Here's the reading of the will. He forgives all your iniquities. He heals all of your diseases. He redeems your life from destruction. He crowns your That's head with loving kindness and tender mercies. He satisfies your mouth with good things so yep. that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Oh, I like it. 
That's the reading of the will. That's, what's, that's what belongs to us. satisfies my mouth with good things so that my youth is renewed like the eagle. Mm -hmm. It and, works. And what are the good things that he satisfies our mouths with? The Word. Yeah. We put the Word. In our eyes, in our ears. Yep. In our heart. Yep. Out our mouth. Mm -hmm. And we're satisfied. That's, we're satisfied. With long life. With long life. As, as opposed to... Whatever the Word says, we take it. We take it. And as, as opposed to saying, well, I'm, I'm getting old and things are breaking down and, and I, I'm not like I used to be. You know, you're such and such years old. No, no. My youth is renewed like the eagles. He Amen. fills my mouth with good things. He satisfies me with, with long life. Yes. Does He satisfy me and show me His salvation? Amen. That's long life. Long life... Ooh, long, long life, life is part of the inheritance. Amen. It was part of, it was part of Abraham's inheritance. Mm -hmm. um, let me just read something to you, Gloria. Okay. This, this actually is the um, article that you wrote that really inspired this, this teaching. Oh. And um, I've got a copy of it for you over here. Oh, but, good. but I was reading this and look at, you talk a lot about Abraham. And you said, Abraham's blessing is your inheritance. It has been willed to you by the Word of God. That's right. And you were talking about how Abraham um, was rich in silver and gold and in, in cattle and how he, was, how he was so blessed. And so we're talking, we were talking a moment ago about what belongs to us mm -hmm. and long life. I mean, you've written a book by that. Mm -hmm. And a tremendous book concerning that. You did a lot of research on that. And in your article, mm -hmm. part of the inheritance is long life. That's right. Satisfied with long life. Satisfied. And, and you wrote in this article, um, God so renewed Abraham's youth that after Sarah died, he was able to remarry and have six more children. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the truth. And, <laughs> You, Terry and I, every so often, we look at each other and go, you want another child? And she go, nah. <laughs> at, at 175 years old, the Bible says Abraham's spirit was released and he died at a good, ample, full old age, an aged man satisfied and satiate, satiated mm -hmm. and was full. gathered unto his people. That was the Amplified translation. So that's part of uh, Galatians 4, 7. Yeah. Well, that was, that no, was, wait. where's the apple bite? Is it on here? No, that oh. was, I was reading from oh. your other sheet there, but, okay. but all that to say that long life, strong life yeah. is part of the, part of the inheritance that belongs but to us. But you know, George, without people being aware of that yeah. uh, from the scripture, mm -hmm. where that's because that's where the faith, you can read books on long life, but the power to do it yes, is in the, the word of God. Uh, they don't know any better than to just go on and kind of fade away. Mm -hmm. But we know better. We know better. You know, I took, a few weeks ago, I took Terry to, she had an eye doctor appointment, checkup for her eyes. And so we're sitting there talking to this doctor and um, we're, we're visiting with each other. And all of a sudden he said this, he, he looked at Terry's chart. He saw how old she was and she, he looked up at her and me and she said, now, are you retired? And both of us, no, both of, not hardly. both <laughs> of us at the same time said, no, we almost sat up in our seats like, no. And he went, he, he went back like this. He said, okay, okay. <laughs> all right. Well, that, that really never crosses our minds. No. Be because of the calling that we have. Mm -hmm. But that's all that to say, Gloria, that's part of our inheritance. Yes, amen. It belongs to us. Good, good life, long life, strong life. Um, and, and that scripture that you quoted uh, from Genesis 25, 8, Abraham's spirit was released. He died at a good, ample, full old age, 175 years old. An old man, satisfied, satiated, mm -hmm. and then he was gathered to his people. So really, we should. He was satisfied. He was satisfied. He was through. Yeah. He was. He was done. He'd done what he was supposed to do, and now he's going on. Brother Hagen, that was that was that way. Brother Hagen preached shortly before he passed away. He said, he said, if I'm gone, if I'm gone to heaven, that means I was satisfied. Amen. And you know the story. He was at. 
He was at the house. Oh, for a big breakfast. Bre big bre had a big breakfast, mm -hmm. sitting in a chair, and his favorite thing was a bowl of strawberries. <laughs> and he ate his first bowl of strawberries and asked for a second one. He's right in the middle of eating his second bowl of strawberries, and he went to heaven. And it was a ripe old age. How old was he? He was 86 when, 86. He, when he went. Now, Brother Copeland, he's pressing in a little bit beyond that, know a lot beyond that with 120 years. Mm. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Well. But no matter, no matter what age, it is the will of God, and it's part of His inheritance that we live a long, yeah. strong, prosperous, healthy, energized, powerful life. And fulfill our calling. To fulfill our calling. Is. You know, and if Jesus tarries, I'm looking forward to seeing my, grand, my grandchildren married and my grandchildren having children. Mm -hmm. With long life, does He satisfy That's us? Right. So we're talking about this, and we, we covered some things in this first part, but go to point B because of time, Glory. Go to okay. point B. And we're, we're talking about being joint heirs with Jesus. In Romans 8, 16 and 17, the Spirit Himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. Yes, amen. If indeed we suffer with Him, we may be glorified also together with Him. Or the word suffer there means to stand or to believe. So we're seeing here that we're not only heirs of God. We are born of God. Born of God, we are joint heirs with Jesus. And if you look at the definition from the Greek where it says joint heir, it means one who is in union together with an inheritor. Hmm. One who is in union heir. together hmm. with an inheritor. Now I use the example here of Terry and I were joint heirs to my parents' estate. We both received everything because we're one. Mm -hmm. When my mother, my father passed away first, and then my mother passed away, and when she passed away, then we began the process of going to the attorneys and, and yeah. seeing that th the will was all intact. She had a will, and what mother did was that, that everything that she had was passed along to me, and it was passed along to my sister. But because Terry and I are joint heirs together, then my part, my part, of that inheritance actually was given to both Terry and me. Mm -hmm. she, was, she was the partaker of that because she's a joint heir. Anything, everything that I have, it's hers because of, of being a joint heir. Well, think about this. Everything that Jesus has is ours. Amen. Why? We're joint heirs. We're joint heirs. That's good. We're mm -hmm. joint heirs with Him. Praise God. In verse 17, this is uh, number four in point B, verse 17 in the Amplified Translation, if we are His children, then we are His heirs also. Mm, that's heirs good. of God and fellow heirs with Christ, look at this, mm -hmm. sharing His inheritance with Him. Good. Hallelujah. Now that, that, takes, that takes some meditation time to really, Praise God. really think about the fact that we are joint heirs with Jesus. Then it repeats it. And it repeats it. It says it again. And then in the New Living Translation down there at the bottom, together with Christ, we are heirs of God's glory. Praise God. Well, what is the glory of God? But the glory of God is the presence of God Mm -hmm. heavy with everything good. Amen. Praise and that's what God. we're joint heirs with. Amen. That's what belongs to if us. If people only knew what was available to them. That's so true. They would do whatever that's it so took true. to walk in, after Him. That's absolutely true. And, and they, well, Scripture tells us, Gloria, that people perish for what? Lack A lack of, of knowledge. knowledge. Mm -hmm. A right. lack of knowledge, I believe the Amplified translation of that scripture, I don't have it here right offhand, but the Amplified translation of that scripture talks about revelation of their redemption. Oh, it does? Mm -hmm. That's good. Yeah. That their says rede it. redemptive rights, I believe that's what it says. But, but they perish for a lack of knowledge of what is in the plan of redemption for them, or you could say for lack of knowledge of what belongs to them in their inheritance. That's Be true. Because before, before I got here from Massachusetts, 
I didn't really know whether or not it was the will of God for me to be healed. Why? Because people were telling me, well, you don't know. You don't know. Now, God might want to teach you something. God, God will put you in the hospital. Faith comes by hearing, unbelief comes by hearing. <laughs> yes, that's true. And you can be Wait raised to Wait hear. Wait a minute. You can, hear, you can be raised to hear the wrong thing all your life if you're not careful. Faith comes by hearing. Hearing. And unbelief mm -hmm. comes by. You know, people, yeah, yeah. Uh, a lot of people I'm sure think that we're really far out. We're just far in. I mean, you know, <laughs> this this in. belongs to us. We're far. We take it. Yeah. Everything yeah. the Word says, if Jesus is Lord of our lives, yeah. belong to us. I was reading an article the other day online about something. I was doing research for a message I was teaching. And I thought, boy, this is really good. And I was reading down through, this is, oh, that's good. That's good. And then you got to the part about, we, we're not really sure if it's the will of God for us to be well. I went, oh, man. He should get a Bible. Oh, he should. <laughs> That's all he needs is a Bible. All he needs is a Bible. He needs to get a Bible. Wouldn't that be sad to not know it, the it will is. of God? It is. It's for you to be healed, for you to live long, for you to be blessed. Lord it is God. not the will of God for us to be confused. Mm -mm. That's about, why we have the Word. About these things. That's why we have the Word. That's why, that's why we have Isaiah 53. That's right. Jesus bore our infirmities. He, he carried our infirmity, bore our sicknesses. Mm -hmm. By His stripes we, we are healed. We were healed. We were healed. Yeah. We were healed. And that is the will of God. That is the will of God for us. And we are, we are not only heirs of God, but we are joint heirs, joint heirs with Jesus. Amen. We are joint heirs with Him. And so let's go to the second page. We've got five minutes here. Uh -oh. And now, Okay, we're talking about Jesus being a joint heir with him. Mm -hmm. Now we find out from Hebrews 1, look at the top of your page, Hebrews 1, 1 and 2, that he is heir of all things. Amen. It says, God, who at various times and in various ways spoke in times past to the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken to us by his Son, whom he has appointed heir of all things. Things. I think that's an interesting choice of words. Isn't it? Appointed, Appointed. heir of all things. Ah, that is interesting. That's, mm -hmm. that's legal terminology, isn't it? Mm -hmm. That's not, uh, I mean, it's, it's an appointment. You've been appointed. It's an, you, you take it. Yeah. You can't say, no, I'm not going to be an heir. <laughs> he has been, that's true. He's been appointed heir of all things through whom, through whom also he made the worlds. So Jesus was appointed heir of all things in the Amplified Translation in verse 2, whom he appointed heir and lawful owner of all things. Praise God. Amen. So this is now, What are we? We're not just heirs. No, we're, we're joint, joint heirs. heirs. Joint heirs. And if you look at four, number four there on your page, this is, this is kind of the summary mm -hmm. of all this. Okay. If Jesus is the heir of all things yeah. and we are joint heirs with Him, mm -hmm. that makes us heirs of all things as well. That's right. That's a good statement. It's true. Everything, everything that we need for... for we even got born over again to be heirs. Yes, we did. We, did. we sure did. We're not the same old, same old. No, we're not the same <laughs> not old, Not if same we're born. Old. That's why it's vital to be born over again. That's right. My goodness. That's right. I was thinking about this, this scripture. It's not on your page, but let me read it to you. Okay. <clears throat> we're, we're talking about being an heir of all things. Mm -hmm. And it says in 2 Peter 1, 3, it says, according as his divine power has given us all things, mm -hmm. all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of Him. See, that's what you're talking about there, about the study of the Word, through the knowledge of Him. Yeah, knowledge. We have to have knowledge of the Word of God to know what is ours. 
So through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us, or you could say they're already given unto us, exceeding great and precious promises yes. that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Boy, that's a great scripture. Boy, that's a mouthful that there. Now, what was the reference on that? That was 2 Peter 1, 3 and 4. So if, if Jesus is the heir of all things, he's the, we've settled that fact that he's the heir of all things. Uh, God appointed him heir and lawful owner of all things. Yes. And then we are joint heirs with him. That makes us heir of all things as well. Everything that we would need, everything that you would ever need, need to be successful on this earth belongs to us now through in Jesus Him, Christ. through Jesus Christ. Amen. It's, all right. it's Everything, true. everything, Gloria, that this ministry needs to, right. to be successful and to fulfill the will of God that is on this ministry. You know, Brother Copeland has received a word in 1976. And actually, that was the first thing that I was introduced to the day I walked through the doors was the brochure that we were sending out that the word of the Lord was to take this uncompromised word of faith and preach it from the top of the world to the yeah. bottom all the way around the middle on every available, available voice. voice. Yes, amen. And so we're doing that today at Kenneth Copeland Ministries. We are, we are aggressively looking to get this word on every available voice. Well, everything needed for that, because we are joint heirs with Jesus, we have it. It's ours. Mm -hmm. because he is the heir of all things. Now, I like and this. And we're born of him. And we're born of him. I'll finish up with this last statement. It's on your page. It's the last statement there. It's a quote from Gloria Copeland that I wrote down some time ago. I know her. <laughs> when you were born again, Jesus moved in with everything he I has. like that. That's good. If Isn't I do good? say so myself, that came from the Lord. When you were born, born again... again Jesus, Jesus moved, moved in, in with, everything with everything he has. That's the truth, George. So it would do us well to do a study of everything Jesus has. Yeah, do because that. Because everything Jesus has belongs to us. Yes. And okay, amen. I'll be looking forward to that study. Oh boy, Thank I've committed much, myself here. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> we'll be right back. What if someone notified you today that a wealthy relative had died and left you the title deed to everything he owned? And what if that deed provided everything you'd ever need for the rest of your life? Consider yourself notified. When you accepted Jesus as your Lord, all that belongs to the Father became yours. With the Receive Your Inheritance Package, you'll learn all of the benefits of being a child of God. You have to know what the will says in order to receive the benefits, and as you hear and read God's Word, your faith will rise to receive your inheritance. In our Covenant with God mini-book, Kenneth Copeland teaches using multiple biblical examples exactly what our covenant is and what God included in it. Receive Your Inheritance series is four audio messages that will help you to understand what it means to be beneficiary of everything Jesus provided. God has given you a covenant of provision, but it's not just for your own benefit. It is a testimony that manifests His presence in the earth. Start living your covenant with God. You are the beneficiary of everything Jesus provided through the cross. Start living in your covenant with God. Request your free copy of the Receive Your Inheritance Package from Kenneth Copeland Ministries. Go to kcm.org.uk forward slash TV special or call 01225 787 310. This free offer is good for 30 days. Postage charges may apply. Contact your regional office for more information. I'm going to read to you again the quote that we, that we read a few moments ago from Gloria. And she said, when you were born again, Jesus moved in with everything he has. I believe that. And that happened to you, Gloria, when you accepted Jesus as Lord. Happened to me, yes, happened amen. to so many people. And really what takes place, and we've been talking about this, is that when you are born again, that's when that inheritance is conferred upon you. That's, that's right. That's when you step into it. Mm -hmm. and, and that's the beginning. That's the start. That's when you qualified for it. That's when you qualify for it. Exactly. So Gloria and I are going to pray for you right now. And Gloria, I'll go ahead and pray. And if you'd repeat, 
and right. you repeat right I'll along with it. Gloria as we pray this prayer. Okay. Say, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. I'm asking you. I'm asking you to come into my life. To come into my life. I receive. I receive Jesus as my Lord. Jesus is my Lord. As my Savior. As my Savior. Do something with my life. Do something with my life. And I will serve you. And I will serve you. All the days of my life. All the days of my life. Jesus is my Lord. Jesus is my Lord. Amen. Amen. Now, if you did that, something just happened to you that is going to la last for eternity. Actually, what I said was take my life take my and life. do something with it. Do something so you with offer it. yourself. Yeah. Take my life yeah. and do something with it. And that's, what, that's what's happening with them. Yes, amen. Take my life. And, and you open the door to the goodness of God, to the will of God, for everything wonderful that He's got planned oh, for you. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Everything. What you just said there, that's, that's the inheritance. Now, it doesn't matter really what you might have expected. I said I'd never marry a preacher. But, <laughs> but I married <laughs> a preacher. Got. But that was what I was supposed to do. I just didn't know it at a, yeah. at a young age. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't see it, any. I guess I didn't see any preachers I wanted to marry or something. <laughs> but God does for us exceeding abundantly beyond oh, all that we ask or think. Been, his plan is always the greatest. It's the greatest. It's, it's the far greatest. above what you could figure out in the natural. Well, we have a, a book for them Good. and some brochures to bless you with. If you made that decision to make Jesus as your Lord, a book by Kenneth and Gloria, he did it all for you. And then some brochures that will help you in your walk with God. Amen. It's going to be a new life Praise and a beautiful God. life It'll in him. Be wonderful. Praise God, Gloria. Thank you, Lord. That's been good, George. I've enjoyed it. Join us again tomorrow to learn how we are heirs, to learn that we are and how heirs of everything he has for us. Hallelujah. This is Gloria Copeland and George Pearsons reminding you that Jesus, Jesus is Lord. Lord. And I'll just add this, everything's going to be all right. Amen. If you'll stick with him. Amen. Amen. If you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior today, Kenneth and Gloria Copeland have a free gift for you. To help you learn who you are in Christ and to begin your new life in victory, request your free salvation package today. Simply email us at partners at kcm.org.uk. Live the good life this year. Keep your faith strong with the Word of God and step into a year of abundant harvest. Come to a Kenneth Copeland Ministries event. August 29th through the 31st, join Kenneth Copeland and Jerry Savelle at the Midwest Victory Campaign in Southfield, Michigan, USA. September 12th through the 14th, join Kenneth Copeland at the Gold Coast Victory Campaign in Queensland, Australia. November 7th through the 9th, join us at our nation's capital for the Washington, D.C. Victory Campaign at the Hilton Memorial Chapel in Woodbridge, Virginia, USA. For more information, visit kcm.org events.